The Journey Through Death By conducting the symbolic ritual of burying the deceased pharaoh's body in the pyramid, the Egyptians sought to ensure the safe passage of his soul through death. But they still believed that the journey through the realm of the dead was fraught with danger all along the way. Since there was apparently no definite sequence to the events that the Egyptians thought took place in the realm of the dead, for ease of understanding, I will use the sequence God used in the parabolic pantomime of the Passover parable. During his journey through the underworld, the deceased pharaoh, who had been Horus, the name of Osiris while alive, proved himself to be Osiris, the firstborn of the gods, by hunting down and killing all other firstborn in the realm of the dead. As you can see from the following, the pharaoh, Eunice, in this particular text, was assisted in this by other gods. Eunice hath weighed his word with the hidden god who hath no name, on the day of hacking in pieces the firstborn. Khonsu, the slayer of the wicked, cutteth their throats and draweth out their intestines, for it is he whom Eunice sendeth to slaughter. And Shismu cutteth them in pieces and boileth their members in his blazing cauldrons of the night. The mighty ones in heaven light the fire under the cauldrons where are heaped up the thighs of the firstborn. Eunice is the firstborn of the firstborn gods. This ritual killing of the firstborn seems to have been identified with the destruction of the damned in the realm of the dead. That was accomplished soon after midnight. After killing all other firstborn, however, the soul of the pharaoh, the name of Osiris, still required assistance to successfully navigate the underworld since the only certain means of traversing the dead land in safety was to obtain the services of some benevolent god or gods who knew the roads and could act therefore as trustworthy guides. The underworld was, in some parts, a hot, dry desert. In other parts, it was swampy marshlands. And even though the divine guide led the deceased soul along the right way through the realm of the dead, the soul always had to pass through a treacherous region known as the Sea of Reeds or the Field of Reeds. The Sea of Reeds was a marshy area subject to flooding, so its designation varied depending on its condition at the time the soul of the dead arrived. If the water level was low, the guide would lead the dead soul along the only way through the field of reeds. But when the area was flooded, it became the sea of reeds, and the deceased soul required the services of a god who could provide a ferry or a boat for crossing. An alternate means of passage, however, was by the parting of the waters, so the deceased could pass through unharmed. As he traveled through the Sea of Reeds, the recently departed soul bathed in its waters, performing a ritual baptismal ceremony to purify himself of uncleanness. While doing this, he recited, I am the essence of a god, the son of a god, the messenger of a god. I have come that I may bathe in the field of rushes, and that I may go down to the field of Kenzet. The followers of Horus cleanse me, they bathe me, they dry me. They recite for me the spell for him who is on the right way. They recite for me the spell of him who ascends, and I ascend to the sky. As this passage alludes, just beyond the Sea of Reeds lay the desired destination of the deceased, the house of Osiris. This house corresponded to the temple at the base of the pyramid in this life. But as I stated above, the pyramid symbolically represented the primeval mountain of God in the next. So the house of Osiris in the realm of the dead was at the base of the cosmic mountain of God, and only by being judged righteous could the deceased pharaoh gain entry to the house of Osiris. But having gained entry, he could then climb the mountain and ascend to heaven from the top of the mountain of God.